Imagine a cold night and a dark night. A night just like this one. It begins with a knock at the door. A farmer and his wife lay in bed. The wife couldn't sleep. She wanted a baby, you see. She said she wanted one so bad that she didn't care if it was weird or strange or as ugly as a hedgehog. She wanted one to snuggle, to hold, to hug to bits. Now, to say that you don't care when you want something is a dangerous thing. Now back to that knock. Imagine the surprise to the farmer and his wife to discover a small, ugly baby hedgehog wrapped up and left right on the doorstep. The farmer's wife snuggled and held and hugged him to bits and gave him the name Hans. She loved her precious baby, but the people in the village didn't. Week by week, the hedgehog boy grew up. Hans learned that he was different, and he learned to be sad. One day, Hans decided he'd had enough, and he left his parents to live in the wild. His mother's heart <laughs> split in two, and she died. Twenty years later, a king was lost, so lost that he'd been wandering for days. He stumbled upon the castle where Hans lived. The hedgehog invited him in and fed him a delicious meal and fell asleep. When the king woke up, he found he was right in front of his castle. The king had been so grateful for the help that he had told the hedgehog to name his reward. To this offer, he replied, Give me the first thing to greet you when you arrive in your kingdom. He agrees, thinking it will be his dog. But things do not go as planned. And it's not his dog, but his daughter that arrives first. A year and a day later, the beast comes to collect on the king's promise. The king reluctantly agrees. So there is to be a royal wedding. The most unhappy wedding party you've ever seen. And that night, there was a terrified princess who lay in her bed. But just as she was about to drift off to sleep, a man stepped out from the skin of quills of the hedgehog. She could hardly believe her eyes. A second night, this happened. She found herself missing him as he left. And she lay comfortably in the warmth and the softness of his coat of quills. When the man returned, he pleaded that if she would keep this secret one more night, then the enchanted spell would be broken. Well, she promised. The next morning, her mother tells her daughter that the wise men instructed that the only way to break the spell would be to throw the skin into the fire. That's not the way, the daughter tells the mother. She broke her promise. And that night, the daughter throws the skin on the fire, and you could hear the screams from the creature for miles. He flees from the castle, leaving the princess all alone. For weeks and weeks, she thinks of what she should do. She goes to the blacksmith, and he makes her a pair of iron shoes. While the castle slept, she slips out in the dead of night to wander the world in search of her husband. She walked and walked, wearing out the first and second pair of shoes, and still she walked, always looking, always hoping, but nothing. Till one day, weary and wretched, she lays down by a stream, 
and sees how she has aged and feels sorrow over her lost youth and of her lost husband. To the health of that most beautiful woman who could not keep her promise for one more day. Husband. How did you find me? I have walked the world to find you. And I've worn out the soles of three pairs of iron shoes. And my hair is no longer red. But I come to claim you. And catch you up. And snoodle you and hug you to bits. And so the princess who could not keep her promise won back her husband with looking without hope of finding and holding on for dear life. She had indeed broken the spell. In time, she grew young again, and there was another wedding all over again. And they all lived happily ever after.